guys, Absolute Dawnlist here and welcome to Test Piece, a segment on my channel where we essentially play a deck until I think it's perfect and each week we're going to show you games that I'm actually playing and also give you guys a deck profile to go ahead and get the deck to the perfect situation where I think it'll be good. Now obviously in the last episode we played a Nami and I felt like Nami was still pretty strong. I felt like that list was almost perfect and there wasn't really anything that I could do to change it at this current moment. So I thought instead of focusing on that, we would move on to the next leader, which is Charlotte Katakuri, as you can see. The leader that, honestly, I have the most expectation for going into this format. This leader is absolutely insane, being a leader that can literally just look at the top of your life and gain an additional K power. This will stack your triggers, this will put cards that you want to the bottom of your stack to go ahead and use them later on in the game, and can even stop your opponent's triggers because you get to look at their life as well. The deck is really, really strong, and I'm playing it in a very specific way that not a lot of people are actually playing it in from what I've seen. and. I really like this way of playing it. Now, as you can see, we are playing some choice cards. I'm playing four Galette, four Brulee. The Brulee is pretty standard, but the Galette isn't very standard. We're playing four Galette just for the fact that I want blockers in this deck. This deck, I found its biggest weakness is the late game, where you're dropping the 10 drop Big Mum, and you're essentially not having anything to follow it up with. You don't have enough counter to stop your opponent from hitting you. So I wanted to play four, four of each blocker to go ahead and give the deck that extra consistency. And then on top of that, we're also playing four smoothie, four cracker, and four perispero. Reasonings behind this is very simple as well. Cracker, perispero, and smoothie all have the same trigger ability, where if you get it off the life, you get to go ahead and play it by discarding a card. This is very good because it means you can focus your dawn into other plays, especially if you know it's going to be coming with your Charlotte Katakuri's leader ability, to go ahead and get either additional attacks in, to go ahead and get a search with the perispero if it dies. You can go ahead and play these cards for essentially free, discard a relevant card such as maybe you have multiple 10 drop big moms or you have multiple seven drop big moms or you have multiple katakuri in hand these cards can come in very handy just to be able to discard play these for free and then get additional bodies to essentially get your opponent's life down because big mom you're going to be controlling the game a lot the whole point of this deck is you're controlling life, you're controlling the game, and when you get to that end game, you're going to be able to play that big mom multiple times, and that's also one of the reasons why we're playing the eight blockers, just because I found in this deck, you really want to get into that late game, and if you get into that late game with no protection, you're not very good, so I found like in this deck, if I'm going into turn three, where I have like five or six Dom, what I'm mostly going to do in those turns is play as many blockers as I had in my hand. So later on in the game, when I'm dropping the 10 drop Big Mom or the eight drop Katakori or the eight drop Big Mom, or sorry, the seven drop Big Mom, I have these blockers to protect my life if I don't have the counter ability. And as you can see, we are also playing quite a decent amount of block counters. We're playing 12 2Ks in Sanji, Strusen, and also Pudding. This is pretty much the perfect counter ratio, in my opinion, when it comes to the 2K counters. You want to max out on as many 2Ks as possible. And these are the best ones, obviously. Because Strusen, it's very good against Zora. You can discard a trigger card to go ahead and KO any one drops. You can KO those buggies. You can KO those Namis which is very very nice you got sanji which is actually a really really good turn one play on top of being a card that can just go ahead and give you two good counter or give you additional resources as well because something i like to do in the early game is just play him on turn one if i go second so i can go ahead and get additional resources of him by getting the bottom or top card of my life to go ahead and just have that additional resource as well and along with that the pudding it's Let's be honest guys, the Pudding is not one we play because of its ability, we play it purely just for the 2k counter. And then the last few cards that we are playing in this deck, we're playing the 4 Pudding, Searcher, it's the Namiya deck, very simple, but we're playing 2 Sovereignty and 2 Thunderbolt. Now, there's a couple of reasons why we play 2-2. Now, I feel like in this deck, you're not going to have a lot of Don in the late game, so there's no real point in having these counters. There's no point in having these uh, events to be there for that. But the good thing about these events is their trigger abilities. Ikoku Sovereignty is another way to gain life, so if it's in the life pile, it's very, very strong, and if you do have some Don, it's a 5k counter as well, which is very, very strong, but you're mainly using 2 for its trigger ability, so if it is in the life, you see it on the top of your life with the Katakuri in the early game, you put it to the bottom, so when you get to the end of the game, you're going to be able to just go ahead and trigger it, discard 2 cards, have that additional life, and most likely wipe out your opponent, and then Thunderbolt, 
This is obviously just on trigger KO any character with five or less cost. So it's pretty much there for that. And there are times where you are going to use it in your hand to go ahead and get rid of an annoying blocker. So we do still play two of it for that. But that's pretty much the entire list that I've kind of been working on, trying out, fixing. And this is what I'm enjoying the most right now. This is the list that I think is working the best for me. So I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this and give you guys my thoughts and opinions on the deck overall as a whole. Because as I said, the biggest weakness in this deck is technically the late game where you don't have a lot of counter in your hand you don't have a lot of protection which is why i choose to play four gallet and four brulee just because yes gallet doesn't have a trigger but it's a two drop blocker that can go ahead and protect you and save your life and then the brulee is obvious because it's a trigger play this card being a blocker which is just really good for yellow and the best card in this entire deck guys i'm going to be honest is also the 10 drop big mum which is why we're playing four of it because you're going to drop this you're going to gain a life nick your opponent life and then you're going to be able to swing for 12k each turn which can be a defense play as well in the terms of oh i'm going to play this card so i have the additional life so you can't swing into me but it's also a weak play at the same time guys which is why we play those blockers so yeah and there are also choices that i'm not playing such as like the shirahoshi i'm not playing the genie card i can't remember the one the one that has the same ability as sanji but with one done I, I i chose not to play those because i don't really like them i feel like they're not necessary i feel like they don't add anything to the deck outside of like oh you're just getting a trigger of shirahoshi playing the card for a zero cow cost character or a zero power character oh you're playing this zero no trigger card that says i have to pay forward to play it and yes can gain me additional advantage but is most likely just going to get swung into the first chance they get so yeah that's just my thoughts when it comes to those but Anywho, let's go ahead and actually get into some games now and show you guys some actual gameplay of the deck and we can see how good we do in the testing. Let's go. What is our first game going to be against? Will it be against something like Zoro? Will it be against a mirror match? Will it be against a Nami? What will it be against? I'm kind of curious to see. Like, if it's against a Lord, that's pretty free. And it's against a Whitebeard. Now, Whitebeard is technically our worst matchup when you think about it. It is kind of a hard one because they get their life down really quickly. So we don't really have the ability to abuse their life. Now, our opening hand isn't the greatest. So I think we're going to mulligan this. And still not great, but we did get that that seven drop big mum. So that's pretty nice. But we don't really have a turn one play. So we're just going to pass. We were kind of hoping to get the um, the uh, the pudding. So we could go ahead and look at the top four and potentially get a card. So he goes ahead and starts off with the Ezo. Goes ahead and grabs a Marco from the looks of it. And then ends life. Oh no, got an Edward Newgate and a Marco, the five cost one. So... That's going to be of a bit of a problem. Now, I don't really want to put down a blocker right now just because he does have the five cost Marco, which is annoying. So we're going to go ahead and just put Freedon onto Katakuri, I think, and swing. So we're going to swing in. We're going to view the top of our life. It is a pudding. I think I'm going to just leave that there so we can go ahead and get it and play it next turn. Force out the Marco, make him think, oh, we can just get this free value. It's not a bad card to have. And we did waste also two 2k counters there, which is very good as well. So he goes ahead and swings for the 6k. We will just take this. We get the pudding to our hand. Very good card to get to our hand, just so we can go ahead and slap it down. We can also go ahead and slap something else down. Oh, he does make the Ezo a 6. Okay, I don't want to take that, so we are going to drop a 2k. I don't just want to take two 6ks to the face for free. Like That's not worth it for me. So a draw, we get a Perispero. That's actually pretty good. I think because we got this Perispero, we don't actually do much. We just go ahead and play the Perispero. We put two Don on this. And we swing into the Ezo. I think that's the best. You know what? We can play the Pudding. So we're going to go ahead and swing. Now nah, the Ezo. The, I don't think the Ezo will get buffed again. So we're going to go ahead and swing into... Hmm... We're just going to go ahead and make this big and swing into the white bid. We're going to apply pressure. Yeah, we got the 8-drop Katakuri. We're going to place that on the bottom because we don't really want to see that right now. We want to see something we can play. So he does go ahead and waste a 2k counter there. That's good for me. He goes ahead and wastes the Marco too. And then we're going to go ahead and play this and pass. So um, my guess is he discarded the Marco to make me think he doesn't have a Marco. Because that's something like white bear players will do at times. They'll just go ahead and try to trick you into thinking you don't have it. So something interesting. And we did get a cracker. That's very good. We'll discard the seven cost big mom to go ahead and play that. He goes ahead and plays. Ooh, he goes and plays, and plays a fetch. So, ooh, we've got the 10 drop big mom as well. That's going to be very useful. 
All right, so we're just going to go ahead and we're not really going to do anything this turn. We're just going to play the seven cost Big Mom and we're going to let him decide to give us a life on run. He chose to take the life and we're going to pass there. So now we've got the seven cost Big Mom on the board. It's going to give us advantage. It's going to give us the ability to swing for eight each turn. That's going to be very nice. And then he's got eight Don to use for himself. So we're going to see what he does with that eight Don. Right, so he swings the thatch, swings eight. Uh, I mean, we kind of have to take it, but we did get a sovereignty, which we're going to use. We're going to discard the blocker, and we're going to discard, let's see, we're going to be on nine next turn. We'll discard the pudding. Okay, and then he goes ahead and swings for six. We'll just take this as well. Basically three. Plays an Otum. Oh, okay, so he's going to play the Marco to kill the put cracker here. A bit annoying, but I knew he was going to try and play that game, so it's fine. All right, so he takes the life, we draw. Now, he's got two Don up, so the chance of him having a ton of counters is there. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put... Ooh, I want to put one Don onto the Paris Sparrow, swing with the Paris Sparrow, and then just place it on top of my deck, I think. I think that's the best play. Because I also want to drop the Katakuri. Um, I could also just drop the Cracker. The best play would probably be dropping the parrot, the brulee, though. Hmm. Like, drop the brulee, so the next time we have it for the big mum play. Like, he's not going to have any life left. If he plays the white beard, he will. Now, nah, you know what? I think I'm just going to go in for some assault. I think I'm just going to go in and make him waste cards in his hand, so next turn we can just go ahead and swing at him. Okay, let's see if he takes this eight. If he counters out, I, I'm fine with that. Because that means he wastes his cards in the hand. He has one good life left. If he doesn't, I'm just going to go ahead and put all of this on the big mum and swing. He took it. Okay, yeah, we're just going to we're just gonna put like all of this on big mum. Swing for 13. Okay. 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 He needs one more K counter. And there it is. So now that he's done that, we're going to go ahead and put the last Dawn on Katakuri. We're going to view our top life. It's a cracker. That's nice. And it seems that he just decided to scoop because he must not have had any counter left in hand. That's kind of what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to apply the pressure there and you win by doing that. But let's go ahead and go into the next game and see how we can do against another deck. What is the next game of test piece? What we're going to have? What we're going to have? Um, if I'm going to be honest, I kind of want to see a mirror match just to show you guys the differences of the deck. But who knows? Uh, it looks like we've got a Zoro. Okay. An aggressive deck, an aggressive deck, and we've got a hmm, interesting choice here. Like we've got the seven drop and we've got the ten drop, but I think it's a mole there. Yeah, the hand is just a bit worse, but hey, we can make it work. We can make it work. It's not the end of the world. Okay, let's see what we're gonna draw for turn. So we draw Strusim. Honestly, not a bad draw. Uh, I think I'm going to drop the Struce and just kill the buggy right off the bat. It seems like a good play, because then we can also get rid of the Thunderbolt, which isn't really going to do anything. Or I could just play the Sanji. You know what, we're just going to play the Sanji. <laughs> we're going to play the Sanji so that next turn I can go ahead and get an additional card in my hand for free, and also just swing into this buggy if he goes ahead and swings it. You know, seeing as Sanji's a strike. So he goes ahead and puts one onto the Zoro. Probably going to put one onto the buggy as well. All good by all means. Uh, swings. I'll take this hit. That's a good card. Like That's a great card to hit. Cracker. Means I'm going to be able to just swing straight into face. Plays a Dedan as well. Okay. Good for us. Good for us. So I'm going to be able to double attack here. That's good. So I'm probably just going to put all four Don straight onto the Cracker. Make him discard like three cards. Which will be good for us. Okay. So we'll draw for turn. Uh, yeah, we're just going to put everything onto the cracker, I think. Actually, no, no, no. We'll put three onto the cracker because that'll put him up to nine regardless because we have less life. So, swinging for nine. He does choose to take both. Okay, that's a bit of a surprise. And, uh, I need to play the pudding right now. So, I'm just going to put the one on here. Still make him discard at least two cards because he just got two. 
and I'll view the top of my life. We're just going to place that on the bottom. We don't want to. We don't want to keep that there. Okay, so that, that that's interesting. I think he's not going to take this though. There's like there's no reason why he took. Okay, um, I I don't know why this Zoro player just chose to take three life in one turn, but okay, interesting choice. Interesting choice. That 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 that's baffling. I'm not going to lie. So he's going to go in and play the Otama, put this down to two, so he's going to play... No, he's just going to swing. Uh... I can make him work for it? Nah, he can, he can have him. He can have him. I don't think it's worth sacrificing resources to protect the Kraken. Kraken's done his job. He has done his job. Okay, swings five of the Dedan. We're just going to 1k that. And swings six, which we will take. And we got a blocker. Not bad. Okay, so we're gonna draw for turn. Okay, so what we are going to do is we're gonna play the pudding. We're gonna take the seven drop big mum, so that give us it for next turn, being really nice there. So we have the setup. We're then gonna go ahead and put two Dawn onto the Sanji, swing into the buggy, use it to take the bottom life, which we know is the 2k pudding which is really good. Then we're gonna go ahead and put one onto the Katakuri, swing into this, view the top card of my life. We're keeping that there, that's a Pero Sparrow. Very nice. And we'll go ahead and play this blocker and pass. Okay, so we've got the blocker there, we've got a Sanji that's kind of served its purpose at this point. But the Zoro player does have a lot of cards in hand. So it's gonna be a bit of a struggle at some points here, but nonetheless, we'll be able to get through these cards in hand. We can go ahead and whittle him down a bit we'll see how that works though because like he's gonna have to use them it's gonna be a bit long oh he's gonna just go straight for the sanji okay probably gonna swing with this if he does i'm just gonna i'm probably gonna count actually uh we're gonna just block because i want to force him to attack either the blocker or this because like he attacked a 1k with a 2k blocker on board which i find interesting okay so he chooses to do that and then he's probably gonna play a five cost marker because he's got the exact don for that oh no he's gonna play a four cost marker okay like that's not a terrible play whatsoever like he does have two life so we're gonna draw pudding is gonna swing straight into this otama here no reason not to swing into that okay then we're gonna play this big mom and he's gonna have to choose life or death does he want to lose a life he chooses to lose a life okay and we're going to go ahead and put one onto the Katakuri. We're going to view our top life again. It is just the Paris Sparrow. I forgot that for a second, but it's fine. Now, if he takes this, I find that really interesting. Like, he's on one life. If he takes it, it means that he's not really affected by 10 drop Big Mum. But at the same time, he's affected by everything else. No, so he's going to counter out here. He, he's kind of forced to. Like, he, he can't be left with no life, right? So he does take it. Now, he's on nine dons, so what I could theoretically see here is, if, yeah, he plays the white beard. Like, this is what I was kind of expecting. Like, it only made the most sense. And he chooses to swing into the pudding. Interesting choice there. Like, I think if you were going to swing into the pudding, you would just leave it there. Because the pudding's not really doing anything. It's just going to swing into your lower cards, which doesn't do a lot. So we drew a sovereignty. Not really a card we're going to use, but we are just going to go ahead and drop our big mom. Get rid of his last life there and i don't want to swing with this just for the fact that he does get the two counter but it's so worth it it's just so worth it swinging with the big mum because it wastes a 2k counter like wasting as many counters as possible is what i want to do right now okay so i'm gonna attempt to just swing in he's definitely gonna counter out of it there's no reason not to he does choose to counter with a Makino, that makes sense. And we've, we've got like 10k counter here, and a blocker. So he's going to have to put at least two Don onto the new gate, just so he can go ahead and deal with the blocker. We've got 10k counter to protect our big man, we've got four life. We are sitting pretty here. Like, there is no issues whatsoever. So he does play a Makino. Okay, Makino is going to probably boost the Otama. Yeah, make it a 4k, put a Don on the Otama as well, so he can just get a free swing in. I think I'll just block that, because otherwise the new gate is just going to do things, right? So he swings for six. I'm just going to straight count, block it. Because otherwise he's just going to put two on the new gate anyway and kill the blocker. So might as well use it to get rid of a blocker. 
And he's going to swing for 11, and <laughs> he just chose to disconnect. Okay, so I think he knew at this point what we were going to do is just going to drop the two 2Ks. And, like, he's got a lot of life left, but we, we're in a pretty good situation regardless. I don't think we lose this by any means. Like, we drop the two 2Ks. He's then forced to, what, put six Don on here. That, that, that doesn't really do anything. And then depending on his hand with the six cards, like I'm going to swing for probably 11 next turn as well. Like 11 with the big mom and then even bigger with that. Like I, I think in this situation, we just win no matter what. So yeah, guys, that has been this episode of Test Piece. Um, I know this one was a little uh, like this game was a little lackluster just because he chose to scoop in the end but i think in the end we won regardless just because like he realized he did kind of make a misplay he should have just put two on the new gate and swang but at the same time this is sometimes what happens in games especially online where your opponents just kind of leave and scoop when they realize oh yeah we, we're, we're dead regardless like there's nothing we can actually do but yeah guys thank you so much for watching this episode of test piece it's been a fun one playing katakuri i think there's still some things i could probably change with the list but i am happy with this list as well currently will i continue with this list on to the next episode of test beast who knows i'll decide in the next episode but anyway guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more test piece in the future and i'll see you guys in the next one absolute duelist signing out later all